Hey YouTube, what's up? It's CS back here with another installment, and here are my picks for UFC on Fuel TV, Sanchez versus Ellenberger. All right, folks, I have to ask, what do you guys think of this card overall? In my opinion, the matchups, at least on the main card, they don't not make sense, but I'm not exactly looking forward to them either. I think we have potential here for a snooze fest, so I'm sorry if you guys don't enjoy it. I definitely will be tuning in. It is free, so why the heck not? Of course, the preliminary card, that will be on Facebook, and there are some debuts there that I am looking forward to, so definitely tune into that as well. Check out my picks for them in the description below but let's get to the main card of course that's headlined by diego sanchez versus jake elmberger pretty solid main event for a free card so i'm pretty happy about that but let's get to the first bout on that main card it's between tj dillashaw and wallel the gazelle watson in bantamweight now i don't know about you guys but i don't give wallel watson a big chance to win this fight at all if i know dillashaw is in shape and has the correct game plan for this fight because i just think it's a horrible stylistic matchup for watson you know sure watson might be able to keep it up on the feet for three rounds stuff takedowns and all that jazz and just use his length to beat up dillashaw with his jab and low kicks and all that jazz maybe he's able to do that but i think tj dillashaw is more likely to you know do a team alpha male game plan and that's of course you know mix it up with his stand-up and his and his uh takedowns of course use that stand-up to set up those takedowns um just throw a jab maybe a one two and then immediately drop in with an explosive takedown i just don't see well l watson with that frame being able to stuff it so i think del shaw is most likely going to do that and again i don't think Watson has any chance of defending it. So once Dillashaw's on top, I think that he's going to land some decent ground pound. I think he's going to be active enough to where the ref doesn't feel like, you know, standing the fight up. While L. Watson, I think, will oblige to stay on the ground and not try to get back up because he does have a, a decent offensive guard. And I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be surprised to see him throw, like, arm bar or triangle attempts up. And, yeah, I think we're going to see the majority of that, this bout, you know, fought on the ground because of that, because I think Watson will oblige to grapple with Dillashaw from his back. But that doesn't mean jack for the judges. So that's why I'm picking TJ Dillashaw by unanimous decision. I think that regardless of him throwing up submission attempts, I still think Dillashaw is going to do a decent amount of damage from up top. And then you put that with the takedowns. He should walk away with this decision at least 29-28. So yeah, again, TJ Dillashaw, UD. Alrighty, folks, now let's move on to that heavyweight bout between Stipe Miocic and Philip DeFries. Folks, I think St Stipe Miocic has Philip DeFries beat everywhere. You know, I think he's the better wrestler, of course, being a Division One wrestler and all that jazz. He's more athletic. I think he's stronger. I think he's the better boxer, him being a Golden Gloves boxer. Now, we saw in his goal, um, Joey Beltron fight where he pretty much beat Joey Beltron everywhere, but I think the UFC jitters got to him, and that's why he didn't exactly fought, fight to the best of his ability. But I think the kid has all the tools, and I think he'll be a free card, main card, mainstay in the future, and I think he's going to you know, started off with this win over to Freeze. Again, I just mentioned all his attributes, and he should be able to determine where this fight goes against the Freeze. The Freeze is the better submission grappler, so he definitely doesn't want to be on the bottom while the Freeze is on top. And yeah, as long as he's not, which I don't think he is, I think he's going to pick this up, UD, and I think he'll fight everywhere. I think he'll... um box with the freeze for the most part on the feet i think he'll just use solid um lateral movement and use a jab and use combinations and the freeze shouldn't have any answer just because i don't think he's as good a striker or as quick as stp miocic again and look for stp miocic to maybe take him down at the end of rounds and yeah i think that's where you have your 30 27 decision for stp miocic wouldn't surprise me to see miocic get a knockout or something like that but i'm going to lean towards a decision here so stp miocic via ud all right, folks, now let's move on to that middleweight bout between Aaron Simpson and Hani Marcus. Now, this is probably going to be the most boring bout on the card by far, in my opinion. Holy crap, if Hani Marcus is so, like somehow going to out-wrestle Aaron Simpson, then it could look ugly. We saw what Hani Marcus did in light heavyweight against Carlos Vimola. I believe he stepped in on late replacement to do that, too. And uh, that's crazy, because it's not like he normally fights at light heavyweight. That's why he's back at middleweight in this bout. But, uh, yeah, I just don't see how he does that same thing against Aaron Simpson because Aaron Simpson doesn't exactly have an off switch when it comes to his wrestling. I don't know why Carlos Vimola's had one for a while now. You know, Vimola's like a national wrestling champion. All he should be doing is wrestling. And then he was going for guillotines while he was waiting for takedowns from Hani Marcus. So that was kind of ugly. But you don't have to worry about that uh, if you're going to pick Aaron Simpson like I am because Aaron Simpson's just going to go in there, maybe throw a couple jabs, but he's going to immediately 
dive in for a takedown against Honey Marcus, probably push him up against the cage and then drop him. I mean, drop levels and just pull him down with a double leg that just stay out of subs from Honey Marcus. Honey Marcus doesn't exactly have the best offensive guard. And yeah, I look for Aaron Simpson to just ground pound him over the course of three rounds like that. I don't think Honey Marcus is going to appreciate the pace that Aaron Simpson fights at either. And uh, yeah, Aaron Simpson should look slightly relentless going for takedowns and ground pound here. So expect him to win handily at least 29-28 for a unanimous decision. So that's my pick, Aaron the A-Train Simpson via UD. All right, folks, now let's move on to that other heavyweight belt. It's a co-main event between Stefan Struve and Dave Herman. Guys, I like P-Win in this fight a lot. I don't think Stefan Struve has the technical kickboxing to keep Herman at bay over the course of three rounds. He never uses his reach effectively. We saw Pat Berry kind of get within Stefan Struve's reach before Stefan Struve, of course, submitted him and all that. And, uh, yeah, I think Herman's stand-up, you know, technically is pretty good as well. You know, I think that he might be able to outbox Stefan Struve here and there. Stefan Struve is not a good fighter when he's backing up. He does that a heck of a whole lot. I think Herman can pressure him and then possibly just beat him up with combinations until Struve backs up into defense. And I think that's where Herman is going to be strongest in the clinch or just in close quarters where Herman maybe uses his wrestling, you know, him working out team quest and all, just drag Stefan Struve to the ground, don't get caught in any triangles, and just beat him up with a solid ground and pound maybe over the course of three. But I look for Herman to actually finish Stefan Struve in this bout. I think that, um, you know, he does pack significant power. We did see that uh, the last time he fought, and that was against Unulab Idemo. He uh, got the knockout there in that fight of the night. And yeah, I, I don't know. Stefan Struve's a tough guy. He gets bloody a lot, but um, I don't think he's going to survive here against Dave Herman if Herman's, you know, healthy in shape and has a solid game plan and that's just, you know, close uh, close quarters with Stefan Struve immediately. And I think he's good. So Dave Herman via second round TKO punches. Alrighty, folks. Now let's move on to that welterweight main event bout between Diego Sanchez and Jake Ellenberger. Now this is a big bout for the welterweight division. I think that the winner of this should face maybe a Johnny Hendricks for... A title shot. I think that would make sense. But yeah, I think Sanchez is kind of outmatched everywhere. Plus, he hasn't been in the octagon in a while since March of last year against Campman. And he arguably lost that fight. I thought he definitely lost that fight. But of course, he turned to a brawl late in that one. And uh, Martin Campman obliged. And of course, the judges saw it Sanchez's way because of his constant moving forward and his high volume of punches that weren't exactly hitting. So yeah, I think Jake Ellenberg. I think Jake Ellenberg definitely doesn't want to stand in front of Sanchez while he's doing that. And, of course, you know, back up into the cage and just take those shots like Camden kind of was in that third round. So, yeah, I think Ellenberger um, has to be smart enough not to get caught in that game plan. Sanchez, for the most part, is, uh, in my opinion, like a linear kind of fighter. Uh, he doesn't exactly have good lateral movement. And, yeah, he needs to do that to win against a Jake Ellenberger and then possibly drop down for a double leg and uh, try to take Jake Ellenberger down. But I think Jake Ellenberger is too smart and too strong of a fighter to fall into that kind of game plan by Diego Sanchez. I think he'll use good lateral movement on defeat. As long as, as he does that, I think um, his boxing skills should take over from there. You know, I think he's technically a better boxer than Sanchez, and I think he hits harder than Sanchez. So, uh, yeah, I think Sanchez will have a tough time trying to impose his will. I think that Jake Ellenberger, um, for the most part, might bloody Sanchez up. Man, like, Ellenberger hits like a dump truck. Just ask Jake Shields. And, uh, of course, you know, he has pretty good takedowns himself. I think he's the better technical wrestler than Sanchez, so don't be surprised to see Ellenberger actually use a game uh, game plan, you know, around takedowns and all that. And I think he definitely could, Sanchez, is not bad off his back. You know, he's a pretty good submission grappler. He has good sweeps and all that. But again, just Jake Ellenberger has to stay on top of things. And yeah, I think he wins that fight because I don't think Sanchez is going to be terribly offensive from his back. But again, Jake Ellenberger, as long as he's not on the bottom against Sanchez, I think he's good wherever this fight is. So yeah, I've got to go with Ellenberger here. Sanchez is tough as nails, though. His submission awareness is pretty good. I don't think Jake Ellenberger has the stuff to submit him anyway. And I think he's too tough to get uh, TKO'd or KO'd. So I've got to go with Jake Ellenberger here. Be a decision, just being the better technical striker and being the better wrestler. I think he wins this fight. So that's it. Jake Ellenberger via UD. Alrighty, folks. Well, I think that about does it for UFC on Fuel TV, Sanchez versus Ellenberger for me. So I guess I will see you for a review after the event airs. Do tune into it because it has some potential. I think it might be good, but for the most part, I think it's mostly sleepers. We'll see. Who knows? But again, tell me what you guys think of the event. 
in the comment section below of course my preliminary card picks in the description below as well so yeah i think that about does it subscribe if you haven't already and thank you for all the support once again deuces for all my supporters bruce for all my haters and take care